Hello, Chennai. Is anybody out there? Hello, Chennai. There you go. I have a question for you. Do you want to rock today? I mean, really, really rock today. What I'd like to do is I'd like to see my friends up in the balcony. Can you stand up for me? Hello. There you go. All right. What I'd like you to do is on the count of three, I would like you to say, I want to rock. And I want you to make sure that everybody down below can hear you. Are you willing to do that? Okay. One, two, three. Woo, let's give him a hand up there. Now, stay standing for me. How about everybody down here? Do you want to rock too? Yeah. All right, stand up for me. All right, on the count of three, I want you to let them know you're down here, all right? On the count of three, I want to rock. One, two, three. Now what we want to do is we want to do it all together because there's an amazing thing happening today. It's called TEDx Chennai. The world's eyes are on you, Chennai. People are watching you live from around the world and they can't be here with us today, literally. But I want you to let them know I want to rock so loud that they hear this in every nook, cranny, and corner around the world. On the count of three, I want to rock one, two, three. Woo! Give yourselves a hand, please. Wonderful. I'd like to introduce you to somebody I take along with me. <laughs> I've known her for about mm, 43 and a half, or 42 and a half years. This is little Christy. And when Christy was little, there were a couple things she wanted to do. She had dreams. She wanted to be a sports reporter on ESPN. Any of you ever want to be a sports reporter on television? I wanted to be a Major League Baseball player. And the third thing I wanted to be as I grew up, I wanted to be a rock star. How many people out there would like to be rock stars? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? I've been fascinated by rock and roll my whole life. My whole life. From the time I was a little kid and I stood on my mom's fireplace and I used to sing Barry Manilow. By the time I got to ninth grade, I had heard a lot of naysayers. I had heard people tell me I wasn't good enough, I wasn't smart enough, I wasn't cute enough. It seemed that people were really willing to tell me I wasn't enough. And by the time I got to ninth grade, I tried out for nine choir solos. I wanted to sing a solo because I knew I was going to be a rock star someday. This little girl inside whose dream it was to be a rock star was told by her choir teacher, you'd better be better off actually singing in the shower or in the car stereo. You're not going to make a life as a recording artist. So I gave up the dream. I was a sports reporter, but I never made it to ESPN. I had the opportunity to play softball, but I didn't really have the equipment to play men's professional baseball because I'm a female. And I never recorded a CD or become a, became a platinum artist. But what I did is I held on to that passion because there's something about rock and roll. There's something about going to a concert and having the musician stand on stage and share his or her passion with the audience. It enhances, it evokes the mood. Music serves as a universal language. And what I did is I had the opportunity to be in radio and work in radio too. And so in my reporter days, in my radio days, I took my love for sports and entertainment and I made a career for 19 years doing fabulous things, some things that people only dreamed of. I went to World Series baseball games. I went to four Super Bowls, including the one that John Elway, or the two that John Elway won. I've been to the Stanley Cup 
playoff games. I've met John Bon Jovi three times. I've met Alice Cooper. I've had the opportunity to meet John Cougar Mellencamp. And I also had on my 33rd birthday, Robert Downey Jr. sing happy birthday to me. How cool is that? And to many of my friends, I lived the life of a rock star. And so they actually nicknamed me rock star because they saw the things that I got to do in life to be things that many of them only ever dreamed of. And for me, it was a regular reality. And I remember one day, I walked into Starbucks Coffee. And I know Starbucks isn't in India yet, but for those of you who haven't been familiar with Starbucks, it's like the CCD. And when you go into Starbucks, you order really fancy coffee drinks, even if you don't know what you're doing. So you know that you belong, you have to sound really good. So my order was, I'll have a venti, sugar-free soy vanilla latte with two pumps, not five, and I'll have extra foam. And the lady was diligently taking my order, writing it down on my cup, and at Starbucks, they ask you your name. And that very day, I stood there, and she's like, all right, never look up to make eye contact with me. She goes, what's your name? And in that moment, I said, it's Rockstar. And she looked up at me and said, Roxanne? And I said, no, it's Rockstar. And she said, well, forgive me for asking, but is that your birth name? <laughs> and I said, no. But in life, just like at Starbucks, I can be anything or anyone I want to be. And so the process is you order your drink from someone, and then you walk down the line at Starbucks, and somebody else makes it, and they put it on the counter where you receive it. And so as it makes its way down the line, people are looking at that rock star, rock star, what's a rock star? So we get down to the very end, and my coffee cup ends up on the counter, and I hear a, uh, let's see, venti, sugar, fee, vanilla, soy, latte, extra foam, two and a half pumps for a rock star? <laughs> and I stood in my shoes, and they didn't move. I felt like my feet were in cement. And I just stood there. And all of a sudden, I saw something amazing happen in the coffee house. People were looking around, whispering, rock star, rock star, rock star. People were smiling. And as I slowly started to walk over to the counter, people were looking at me and making eye contact and not saying it, but like, you're the rock star? <laughs> I was getting people high-fiving me. People were standing up going, rock star. And all of a sudden, a cheer broke out in Starbucks. Rock star, rock star, rock star. And I was like, this is cool. <laughs> that was seven years ago. And in that moment, not only was I able to change in this amount of time, the energy from the lady who didn't even take time to look up and ask me my name, I changed her energy, she smiled. Complete and total strangers were high-fiving me and chanting, rock star, rock star. And it reminded me of some of my favorite concerts when the musicians or the band stand up on stage and they're so passionate and they embody their passions. It's almost as though you can see the pulse of the music move through their body and the way they connect with their audience and they draw them in. It's amazing. It could be asking the people in the balcony to stand up and cheer. It could be going over this section and saying, we're gonna have a competition and they go and then you go and you go. And everybody gets excited and everyone wants to be loud and everyone connects. What we need now more than anything in the world is we need connection. We need the sense of feeling alive. You've heard some other speakers talk about the topic of leadership today. What I wanted to do is I wanted to see how can I blend my passion for leadership. I spent 19 years in corporate America before I went out on my own. How can I take that passion and pursuit of excellence in my personal and professional development. 
and help people out there who want to live better, who want more things out of life, and who want to be at the pinnacle of whatever it is they do. How can I take that passion for personal and professional excellence, that passion for leadership, and combine it with rock and rock star? Because rock star is such a powerful connotation in virtually every language around the world. Rock is everywhere. Whether it's rock star parking, rock star outfit. You were a rock star in the meeting the other day. So what I want you to know and realize is that every one of us is a rock star. And I also believe that every one of us is a leader. And today what I want to share with you is the approach of leading like a rock star. And it starts with leading from the inside out. Because the most important thing I can tell you today is that when you're a rock star, you embody the principles that we're going to go over. You embody them. And when we embody them, there's an authenticity. There's a trust. There's a realization that it's true. And when we embody something and we become the best that we can possibly be, we serve to create possibilities and empower others who want to live the best life ever at work and at play. So the top 10 opportunities for leading like a rock star. Rock stars are self-directed. Rock stars are very, very clear. These leaders are very clear about who they are, their purpose, and their values. Self-respect is paramount to these people. They lead to their own drum, and oftentimes against the wishes of other people. Rock stars model excellence. They embody it. It is a belief. The difference in modeling excellence is there's knowing something and there's doing something. And when you're a rock star leader, it's about the doing. It's about the embodying. It's not about the knowing it. Knowing isn't going to get the results that we all seek. These leaders expect the best in themselves and others. Rock stars take responsibility. They take responsibility for the things they do and don't achieve in life. And they understand that whatever they are or are not accomplishing comes from inside of them, not external forces. Rock stars are initiators. These leaders are trailblazers. They throw the maps by the wayside. They go out and they create new paths, they create new directions, and they create new roads for others to come and follow later. Rock stars take action. Rock stars are altruistic. They believe in something greater than themselves. They're in touch with their passions, and what they do is they take their passions and they align them with social responsibility. And they make a difference in the people and the planet. And they do so through their time, their talent, or their treasure. These leaders support the greater good. Rock stars connect with their audience. And that goes back to what you all did so eloquently when we started. It was the engagement between the balcony and the people below. It was the opportunity to be engaged and feel alive and be a part of something. Come together on common ground. I've had the same favorite rock band for 30 years. They've connected with me in an emotional state where very few other people have ever connected with me. And when I'm listening to my favorite music, I am so alive. It's about connecting with the human soul. Rock stars create lasting relationships. They realize and invest in robust, mutually beneficial relationships. 
They know the power of bringing opportunities, possibilities, and people to the table to help those that they really, really care about so that those friends, those relationships have the opportunity to live the best life as well. Rock stars are highly sought after. They are the best of the best in their fields. And as a result of that, their clients, their partners, their vendors, and their talent seek them out. They are the specialists. They are known for being the best, and people want to play with the best. And rock stars hang out with rock stars. If you're the average of the five people you spend the most time with, are you hanging out with the rock stars in your life? The people that are going to take you to where you want to be in your life. The people who you feel so comfortable around, you want to learn from them. You want to share with them. And when the time comes, you're willing to let your guard down in front of them. Because you have that respect, you play at a high level. You trust one another. And this is a hard club to get into. Because this club isn't an optional membership. This club is by invitation only. And rock stars put the rock in their role. R-O-L-E. We all play roles in our lives. We're all leaders in some respect. Whether we're leading our households, our teams at work, whether we're students and we're involved in organizations, we all play a role. And it's being able to go back to that foundation that I talked about, whereby connection and aliveness Together, we can do so many phenomenal things around the world. It's putting the rock in your role. Your passions, your enthusiasm, and your excitement. I think there's a little one of these in everybody still today. As I stand in front of you at 42 and a half years old, I still have hopes. I still have dreams. I still feel like I can carry the world on my shoulders. And so as you spend time investing in yourselves today, what I'd like you to ask is, what does this mean to me? How can I be more self-directed? How can I embody excellence? How can I connect with my audience? How can I take more responsibility? How can I hang out with the rock stars I want to hang out with? And how can I put the rock in my role. So when you walk into your organizations tomorrow, before that last click of the door on the handle, ask yourself, how can I put the rock in my role and how can I change the lives of people that I touch every day? I'm Christy Staub. I want you to put the rock in your role. Chennai, thank you very much.